Hello everyone, hi, Sharice Johnson Moore here, and welcome to Think About It Sunday. I am here for you. I am totally like here for you. So, I am Sharice Johnson Moore, your hope builder, lifting you out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. This one is for my business owners, and I have experience these topics I talk about today in Think About It Sunday. Topic for the day is things you do that are sabotaging your business. Things you do that are sabotaging your business. And I want to get into these topics because I have experienced this for the, the year of 2021. So, and I wanted to help those that maybe want to create a business or ones that have started a business and um, some things seem kind of overwhelming to you. So I would like to help you with these words of advice. So let's get into this topic of things you do that are sabotaging your business today on Think About It Sunday. Hey, hello, hello, hello. How are y'all doing today? Hello, hello, Sharice Johnson Moore here, your hope builder, lifting you out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within. If you are dealing with drug addiction, I'm here for you. If you're dealing with church hurt, I'm here for you. If you are dealing with abuse, I am here for you. Okay, so you can contact me. Through my website, www.shereceandjohnsonmore.com, or you can reach me through WhatsApp, my WhatsApp, okay? I want to talk to the entrepreneurs about this subject because I think it's very important that we as entrepreneurs have a clear and clear understanding of. Okay, that's better. A clear, a clear coded understanding of what we need to be doing in our businesses. Okay, topic for today is things you do that are sabotaging your business. Okay, that are sabotaging your business. All right, things you do that are sabotaging your business. Hey, so I want to. I, I, I thought about this con this 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 uh topic because of lately I have I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. I've been dealing with some, I've been trying to give people chances with doing certain certain projects for me, and the <clears throat> Stuff has not, not been up to par. Okay. Let's talk about the first thing you may do that could be sabotaging your business. And that is not having a proper payment method. Not having a proper payment method in order to pay to get paid. Okay. Now, I know we got Cash App, Vimo, PayPal, uh, all, Zelle, and all that, right? But I have decided in my business that I will only, only pay through PayPal and PayPal. That's it. PayPal, and then I send out my invoices through QuickBooks. I use QuickBooks. Um, PayPal or QuickBooks because I know that they keep a legitimate record and I can call and talk to somebody, especially when it comes to my money. Okay. Um, I, um, 
I'm going to give this advice to whomever is running a business, a graphic arts business, any kind of business. If it's a, a coaching business, if it is a, um, it, if it is a um, service, you deliver a service with the graphic arts or a, a, a bookkeeping or um, it's numerous amount of businesses that, you know, that everybody gets paid, right? And the thing is, is that Cash App has been getting hacked. Zelle has gotten hacked. And Vimo. Okay? And I decided in my business that it will be it will behoove me to just use PayPal and QuickBooks. Because I can go and I can dispute a charge and it will be worked out, okay? Cash up, I can't call nobody. I've tried that. I've had some stuff happen to me in the past. That kind of messed my finances up because I could not call nobody and I'd already, you know. And... um. Okay, that could be sabotage, sabotaging your business because some businesses do not want to work with people that just use Cash App. You know, it's different. It's different systems out here, but the thing is, it it would be a beneficial because it's for tax purposes, and I can I can go to QuickBooks and know where if I did a transaction through, uh, got a uh, receive my money. And I have a record of where I spent the record of where I spent the money at. Can, QuickBooks is, I look it. But I'm gonna tell all business potential business entrepreneurs: the one thing you want to have straight is your taxes at the end of the year, because you don't have to go to oh I gotta go find these receipts and I got to and and you know or or um, I, I, you know, lost the receipt, or I misplaced it. It's in my email somewhere. Okay, when I got I got QuickBooks, QuickBooks cola app. It holds records for my bank account, my legitimate business bank account. Get oh, that's another one. Get your legitimate bank account at a legitimate bank, cause Cash App and Venmo and 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 Zelle are not good record keepers. Okay, if you want to have that established with you, go get your your name um, through the you know the documents you know to have your name legalized or you use that name and go to your state and register your name and get you an EIN number because you can not file taxes if you don't have one. Okay, <clears throat> that will be very. That will be good and essential for you to have one of those, um, a EIN number and a legitimate bank account, and your name registered with the state. Then you might want to go as far as um, having it trademark your business name, trademark whether it be a a branding or, or a business name, you want to have a trademark because can't nobody else you don't want to try. Oh, well, uh, we um we like uh candy candles and somebody else got their name in the same in another state already registered with candy candles and that would not be good. Then you got to go through the process of changing your name and all that other stuff. Okay. Um Doubling up on your appointments. When you have appointments to talk to other business owners, that is not good either. Okay. One, that's almost dealing like you did. Say, okay, I got customers, right? Okay, I have, have, I'm not going to say customers, other business owners. Other business owners that might be interested in working with me, and we have made an appointment to have a conversation, a sit down, a powwow, right? 
And it might be on, you know, might be live or it might be on your cell phone, okay? And you schedule this person for three o'clock. Okay, schedule it. We're going to title this schedule it. And you're scheduled to have a conversation with another business owner at three. If you cannot make your appointment, I'm going to say this. If you can't make your appointment to have a conversation with someone, at least inform them an hour or 30 minutes before the conversation. Okay, you might have, okay, or say, and, and, and you, you you might want to do this. Keep yourself on a timer when you're on the phone with other people. Because time is money. Okay? Time is money. Time is precious. You can't get that time back once it's gone. Okay? Now, when you have a business, you want to schedule. Every, don't schedule everybody right behind each other. Don't do that. Please don't. Please, please don't. Don't schedule other people right on top of each other because you never know how long you're going to talk with that first client of the day. At least give yourself an hour between. Say, okay, well, I want to, uh, I got an appointment for two o'clock. Okay, and this other lady want an appointment at three. Okay, I can't get her the appointment at three. I want to give it to her at four because that gives you time. That gives you time. That gives you time to really sit and say your conversation is maybe 30 minutes long or 45 minutes long. That gives you another another hour and 15 minutes to get a rest, to gather yourself, get you a snack, um, get you something to drink. Um, maybe, you know, just take your time during the course of the day because people, I'm going to tell you this, it is a turn off. When you have an appointment with somebody and you're expected to talk to that person at three o'clock and then you're texting that person and saying, oh, I'll be with you in a minute and it's three o'clock. Oh, I'll I, I, I be with you in about 30 minutes. This 3.30. Your appointment was at three. Okay. I, that is a, oh, that's an automatic turn off for people. It's a, it's a turn off because it shows you how serious they're taking their, their appointment with you. They don't think you important. That makes that person that you're standing up feel, oh, I'm not important enough to talk to. Oh, you just think I'm just one of your another, your one of the willy nilly people that you could just brush off and think that's cool. And then you keep the, and, and another thing I'm going to, I'm going to give advice about. If you miss that appointment and you make another appointment with somebody and then you do the same thing again to this person, oh, <clears throat> you really you you really on side of the road. Because that shows how disrespectful you are to this person's time. You don't respect this person's time. When you have an appointment, keep your appointments that you have scheduled. It is very unbusinesslike to do that to people. And you have really like shot yourself in the foot. I'm gonna say it. Because the person that you're supposed to have a conversation with, they might have been your next paying client. And you don't even know that because you have you have disrespected their time by not going through with the first phone call. Now, all right, and then you play around with it. Oh, let me go and get you an appointment for tomorrow. Uh, I can't, I can't, I'm sorry. I got a lot of call. I got it on the phone. Yeah, that's 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 understandable on the first call. But on that second call, and you did the person the same way, oh, they don't even want to talk to you. They say, never mind. Or they might even like, no, I changed my mind. That's okay. Next, you know, I'm I'm good. I'm good. Because what your what you when you Doing business, you have to set yourself on a precedence of being very professional. That is a sign of being professional. Doing on-time appointments, uh, time time clock, uh, um, um, scheduling. Scheduling is very important, okay? Your scheduling, whether it's a phone call or a live uh, stream yard or Zoom meeting. Okay. Um, 
graphic arts designers. I'm going to say this to every, uh, if you're doing a service as a graphic arts designer, please have it that when you cut, I, I'll say this. You're looking for business to do business with a business to do graphic arts, right? And the one thing you do not want to do is be pushy. I'll tell you why. Because it makes you look desperate. I know, you know, you're trying to make business and things like that. It's called advertise your business and advertise your business or what you do. Or word of mouth will help you. Okay? And um, when you're in the process of wanting someone to know about your business and they ask you for some proof of your work, like what your artwork look like, what is your what kind of flies have you made? Uh, can you send me those? You know, and Okay, let that let that business owner decide if they want to work with you because when you push the subject, you keep pushing, you want to work today, you want to work today, you want to work today, you want you you need to work today, you want okay, ma'am, let's get this started. Come on, let's get hold up. One thing is you have to have patience. You have to have patience. Now, if you're not getting that clientele, I could, I, you know, the clientele, and you have like a plethora, like say you got 10 clients that you do work for, right? And you're trying to build your clientele, right? And if you are doing a good job, you don't have to worry about trying to circle that one client, that one client all the time. You know, and then texting them every day. Oh, uh, you want some work today? Do you need work today? Do you need? No, don't don't do that. That's don't please don't, cause that sometimes turn that that's a turn off to a business owner as well. If you're gonna keep circling them, hey, every day you need work today. You need work today. You need. Okay, I'll let you know. I'll call you. I'll call you. Okay. Let's see. What else do I want to talk about? A sabotage your business. When you don't prioritize your shipping orders, I'm going to say that again. You do not prioritize your shipping orders. Okay? And I, me as a person, when I ship out my books to customers, when I ship out my books, or I ship out my uh, contracts for publishing and things like that. It's a right then and there thing. Somebody give me an order. Say somebody gave me an order this morning. Or I, I get off this meeting. I get off this meeting. I'm going to give you this example. Say I get off this 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 uh live and I got an order for a book. I go to the post office tomorrow morning. I don't wait till next Friday. I don't wait till... I feel like it. I don't wait till, oh, um, you know, whenever I fit, you know, I don't do that to customers because your promptness shows the respect that you have for your client, your customers. When you ship out your orders like that, hey, it, it might be one book, it might be 10 books, but that's my, that's my little, that's my little thing for my business as far as my business is concerned, because I think it's very important that we make sure that the people get what they pay for. Because if they don't get what they pay for, people will want their money back. And um I don't I don't um I don't really I mean I'm the type of person where I don't want nobody to feel like that because I wouldn't want that done to me. And I have had that experience in uh, ordering something from someone, and I kept using, I kept looking for the tracking number, for the tracking number, 
and y'all got excuse me, my my sinus is kind of acting up. And um, I waited a week for the. I waited a week. I said I'm get them a week because you never know what's gonna happen. Something might happen. And, you know, I'm I'm sitting there just being nice and comfortable. Okay, a week went by. Maybe okay, a week and a couple of days went by. You know, I understand some people don't work on weekends. I get that. Okay. But then two weeks went by and I still hadn't got what I paid for. Okay. Now in business, when we do that, when we when we when we put out, we selling this, we selling that, I'm selling this, I'm selling that, and you got a rush of customers come in, and I can see your whole inventory going out. That all your inventory is gone. Okay. I see because you want to take these packages, all the packages at one time to go and ship them out. But um, don't have the person waiting three weeks and then you have to kind of not be nasty, but you want to say, excuse me, but um, I paid you such and such for such and such and such. And um, I would like to know where's my package because I have tracked my package and my package is still sitting in the post office. Just like, ma'am, yeah, you. And then the post office tell you, call them, texting you or emailing you, tell me, yeah, your your package is still, you're tracking you and tracking them are still here, but the part, the product might have not, might not be here. Okay, well, bad business move because you lost a customer and she's gonna want her money back. You know, I I understand postage moves slow, mailman moves slow, and I get it. I I, I totally get it. But um, waiting almost almost a month and a half for a package is not the not not cutting it. Not no no ma'am, not cutting it. So be sure you are prompt with your shipping your shipping items your shipping when you ship your stuff out to folks if you're a product producer if you produce products that people are looking for and always keep them in touch your email uh, uh, I, when i send out my books i tell that person i take a picture this is how i do it i know i take a picture i take a picture of the receipt where I just purchased this shipping for them to get shipped to them. I send a receipt and I send them the tracking number. I don't go through UPS and all that. I, I go here, go to the post office, go to the, the window. All right, I'm going to ship this off. Okay, this, I tell, I send my customer a video or I send them a text message with a picture saying, this is shipping out right now. I'm at the post office right now. And then I send them a copy of their receipt and I give them their tracking number for this package right then and there in the post office. So I don't be looking crazy on my end. Okay. I want to keep it very professional, very professional. And I want my customers to come back. So these are the things you want to avoid. These are the things that that you are things you do that are sabotaging your business, where it's over scheduling clients or, or potential clients, um, uh, your your um, jumping into people DMs, where you turn around and you you talk to them about your business and and then you're stalking them for business. Okay, your 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 product, grab it all. Whatever. Your business should speak for itself. Number three could be your shipping orders. You know, when you're shipping stuff out, how long does it take you to ship? Do you keep communication up with the person? You know, and, and okay, so um, there are the things that could be sabotaging your business and don't over promise people stuff and then you don't deliver oh another thing i got another thing stop with these phony contests stop with the phony contests 
free stop with these phony contests. Oh, are you gonna win this amount of money if you enter this? If you enter this, and then it goes to where you gotta buy something from you in order to win it, and then your name might be placed in the raffle. That don't do that to people. If they go win something, they gonna win something. Just say, I just need your email address and do it nice and simple like that. I just need your email address. But why, you know, that 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 one's another one. And don't tell somebody, oh, you won this prize, and then you still don't get no prize. I don't I don't have three, three, I've been done like that three times this this past year. Where they say, Oh, I'm gonna um you won a prize. And I'm like, okay, all right, well, give me your email address and your shipping address, and um, we'll send your stuff. I ain't got the stuff yet, okay? Stop, stop, stop doing people like that because you will lose more business like that in a minute, and the word will spread, and then for you know, okay, ain't nobody buying nothing from you, okay? No, I'm just letting you know. Okay. Um... This, this is just another one I want to say. If someone comes to you and say you make candles or you do labeling on coffee mugs, okay, labels on the coffee mugs, okay? And you do coffee mugs, you do t-shirts, you do vinyls, you do backdrops, you do this, you do that, right? And you're advertising your business that way, Please be doing the business that way. Because nothing hurts more than you false advertising about yourself. False advertisement can hurt you worse than anything. And I think that can hurt you at the utmost because it's affecting your money. It's going to affect your money. False advertisement. Well, you say, oh, I, I do, Um, I make candles, okay? I make candles. The person call you and say, um, maybe uh, I would I would like to order your candles, and uh, I will. I have a business. My business does such and such, and I would like my name, my label, put on the candle for my business and, and use your candles. Okay. Please, please, be upfront with people. If you don't do that, say, I don't do that. Don't have this person with a false pretense thinking that you do this. Yeah, I, I could do that. I could send you samples. I can, um, I, I, I do that. Uh, yes, ma'am. I could send you a sample of what I have. And, and da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. Then. It's nothing. In mute, it's like crickets. It's like I don't hear nothing. Okay, and then I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna get my sister to send you, send you something, and send you some some samples. I'm like, okay, all right. And you wait me another week, and you be like, okay, so what? What's oh, I gotta check back my sister. She supposed to send. Okay, no, I. Mm -mm. If you do a service person asks you about a service and you do not do it, just be nice enough to say, I don't do that. Just say it. I don't do that. Because it'll save a lot of time and effort from the person that's looking for a business that does do that, that, that does provide that service. Okay. I just want to give y'all those little tips about why, you know, things you do that are sabotaging your business. Because these are some of the things that I have been dealing with this year. Okay. And I don't know if anybody else been dealing with that, but I, I've, I've done that. But my thing is, is that you have to keep looking for the businesses that do do these services. And one word of advice Vet your, vet the person, investigate. That's what vet means. Investigate, investigate, investigate the people you want to potentially do business with before you even call them. Investigate, see if their website work. See if their order placement work, like you order something from. See if that, you know, if that works. Um, 
see if they're in the Better Business Bureau. I'm, I'm for real. Cause some people just write, create a name, create this website, and they and ain't and ain't no bit ain't no such business. I'm not saying I've experienced that, but um, you want to be careful out here on the internet streets because a lot of people are just oh I just made this website okay I um yeah it's just throw stuff throwed up there and I'm gonna just go ahead and that's gonna be it. And I'm going to go ahead and just buy, and then it's like, what the world? Then the website, you go back next week, and website ain't even there. Be careful. Call people. Talk to the owners. Talk to the people. Talk to them. I mean, they got to have customer service. That too. Some things are just like, you know, because of that save you time and money. And, and it, it, especially money. Especially money. If you got, I know I ain't got no money to throw away. I ain't got no money to throw away. And, um, you know, oh, just another one. I want to tell y'all about this other one. Say you want to hire a virtual assistant, right? So you want to hire a virtual assistant, please do your investigation with that, about that person before you hire them. Please, because it'll save you money. And if you are out, I'm you gotta you gotta investigate these businesses. You gotta investigate the people that's behind these businesses. You could say you you could you could say on Facebook, I'm a virtual assistant and don't know nothing about no graphic design, but you got it up here that you do graphic design. Or you do um, uh, newsletters and you don't. Or um, you do customer service, but you don't. And you do you know, certain certain things, requirements that you need for your business as a virtual assistant, you need to know. And if you don't know them, don't, don't, don't do that to people. Don't say I do this work and you don't do it. Okay? Save yourself a lot of headache. All right, these are the things that you do that are sabotaging your business, okay? I want y'all to keep in mind, my name is Sharice Johnson Moore, your hope builder, lifting you out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. And I am the owner and CEO of Sharice Johnson Moore LLC and LBM TV is my new streaming channel. And if you would like to advertise on, on my streaming channel, please reach out to me through my website, www.sharicenjohnsonmore.com, or you can reach me through my email. I am Sharice at sharicenjohnsonmore.com. I greatly, greatly, greatly appreciate you. And I would love to have your commercial of your business. Or you, if you just want to do a shout out, you can send me your product. Reach out to my DM, my DM or contact me through my website for to talk about that at a appropriate time. Okay. All right. I love y'all. And I will see y'all at six o'clock for Arthur's Excerpt Sunday. Okay, babies. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye, babies. Hello everyone, Sharice Johnson Moore here, owner and CEO of LBM TV. At LBM TV, our objective is to give you programming that will invigorate, motivate, and inspire you. Our programming will provide you with insight, in-depth knowledge, and solutions in your daily living. We can be seen on every smart TV, smartphone globally. We're located on the C1 Media Smart TV app, Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, and Google TV. So get ready to enjoy positive, uplifting 
programming for your daily living here at LBM TV, where we care about you. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Sharice Johnson Moore here, and I have something special for you. Okay, I'm starting a new streaming channel, and it is entitled LBM TV. Okay, so I want to get you seen in front of 4.5 million people. Okay. You know how many people that is that you could advertise your business to, that you could put yourself on front of the people to be seen. 4.5 million people. Oh my God, that's a lot of people, right? So, I'm opening the door for all of those that would like to advertise on my TV channel, LBM TV, an opportunity to really get in front of the people. You can contact with contact me through lbmtvmedia at gmail.com for further details. lbmtvmedia at gmail.com for further details. Okay, so I want to get you seen in front of 4.5 million people, okay? So that's on a daily basis. And I wanted to let you know that I support all businesses, okay? So, come on in. Come on in the room and get seen on TV, okay? All right, babies. I love you.